Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Maggie, and I'm going to talk to you today about how I do warm-ups and bell ringers and do nows and whatever else you call them. Um, so for me, I call these things do nows, which I think I stole this idea from someone else, but I really like the idea of it being called a do now because when you come in the room, I want you to do it now and I always joke with the kids about that um but for me I use my do nows as my way of kind of obviously starting off the day but my way to kind of take care of business that needs to be done let's do it first let's get it out of the way and then we can do more exciting things um so for instance I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna tell you how I do each day because each day for me has a theme and then after that I'm going to tell you kind of why I do it this way but let me kind of start off by telling you this so it makes sense so of course I'm an English teacher and I love alliteration so each one of my days of the week has a specific name and a specific thing we do on that day this also is really good because the kids know when they come in on Monday they know exactly what we're doing for the warm-up um, and there's really not any surprises. They kind of get over the complaining part of it because it's always going to be that way. So on Mondays, I call them musical Mondays. And so I have up on the board, um, 10 song lyrics and then a piece of figurative language. So for instance, we start off with similes. So it will have musical Monday and then it will say simile. It will have the definition of what a simile is and then two examples, just like your generic examples. Um, and then it will have 10 song lyrics. And within those 10 lyrics, about five of them will be similes and about five of them will not be. I try to pick song lyrics across all genres of music because I listen to everything and I know the kids do too. Um, and I also try to put some old stuff in there, some current stuff that's on the radio. So I do update these almost every year to try to add newer songs and things like that. Um, so literally what the kids write down is they'll write down Musical Monday, they'll write down the definition of simile and the one example that I have on the screen. And then all they have to copy down is out of the 10 lyrics, the five or however many that they think are similes. And then when everybody's done, I go over the definition, I go over the example, and then we read through each one of them and they call out no or yes that it is or is not a simile. And then, of course, we sing them, <laughs> we joke around with them, and all that good stuff. So they really love Musical Mondays, and I have to admit, it's probably my favorite, um, just because I love music. And it's a good way for us to review these terminology things that you need to review figurative language literary devices all those things are definitely on final exams and they're important but i don't know that they're worthy of us taking time out of class to really go over them especially since i teach um, sophomores mostly um, they should already know these things they mostly learn them as ninth graders and similes and metaphors they learn them i think in like elementary school so, I don't like spending a lot of time on them, so this is an easy way to kind of review it, refresh it in their minds, but not take too long on it. And speaking of terminology, on Tuesdays, we do Terminology Tuesday, or Term Tuesday, if I'm feeling lazy. And I will introduce a new concept, or a new type of figurative language, or something like that. We'll take notes on it, we'll do some examples, and then we move on with our lives. So, for instance, when I first teach them theme, technically it should not be the first time they've heard it. For some of them, it is. We will spend a long time on this warm-up. When I teach them personification, it should not be the first time that they've heard it. So, I tell them the term. We write down the definition. We write down some examples. We talk about it. We have as much fun with it as we can. And then we move on. A lot of times also on Tuesday, this will be when I introduce big things. So main idea, main idea versus summary. Like I said, theme, all the figurative language. Um, what are some other things? Hmm. 
Oh, um, point of view. So first person, second person, third person. All those big things, those big terms and things that you need to know in English class. Yeah, we talk about them throughout the year, but you have to know what they are first. And I don't like taking a lot of class time to do that. I'd rather use it to talk about a book or something. So this is my time to kind of do that. Also on Tuesdays, um, a lot of times I will use um, that day to introduce the figurative language thing that then we're going to do on the next Monday. So we talked about similes and metaphors last week. So this week's Musical Monday was simile. This coming week's is going to be metaphor. So we did go over it. Now we're practicing it. So it's kind of this idea of you get to practice, uh, you get to learn it, then you get to practice. So then Wednesdays are a doozy. So Wednesdays are, since I teach English too, workout Wednesdays. Now obviously we're not working out, but we are... Actually, no, it's not Workout Wednesday. That's what I used to call it, and now I call it Wordy Wednesday. Pardon me, I got myself mixed up. So it's called Wordy Wednesday, and on Wordy Wednesday, we do EOC practice. Excuse me. So when I say EOC practice, I mean you are silently by yourself reading a story or reading an article and doing um, practice questions. That's it. We have to do it. Our school makes us do it. And to be quite honest, it's the best kind of practice that they're going to get before they take the EOC because it is hard as crap. Um, so then after they finish, um, and it's usually only about five questions, um, we go over it as a class. We talk about why this is the right answer and why this is the wrong answer. We talk about how we hate standardized testing. We talk about how... I could understand why someone would put B and C, but it's not the right answer. D is the right answer. Um, and we kind of analyze them. And I think this helps them a lot. It helps them get used to kind of this sitting and reading and having to chunk it into pieces and really digest it and answer questions. Um, it helps them get into the test maker's kind of mindset because we do have practice books that we use. I also, though, do not go in the order of the test booklet. So, for instance, the very first thing we cover in English 2 is Ancient Egypt. So then, what we do is we talk about Ancient Egypt. I go through the book, and there happens to be a section that's called Curse of the Pharaoh's Tomb or something. And it's about how all these lies were made up of curses that went uh, to protect mummies and all these kind of things. So, it's still connected to what we're talking about. It's not far-fetched. Then the next week... We were still talking about ancient Egypt, but we had just read the Great Hymn to the Aten, which is a really, really long poem from ancient Egypt. And in the test booklet, there was a poem, Kublai Khan. It's longer. It's definitely older. And that was my connection. So I can't always make great connections, but for instance, when we read A Doll's House, which is what we're getting ready to read next, there is a section that has a play in it. Just a section of it. So we'll do that. So you're still making it relevant to what you're doing. But, I mean, that's as exciting as it's going to get. The kids obviously don't, don't like Wednesday. I don't like Wednesday, but it's got to be done. The other thing is, I really like doing this test practice on Wednesday. Because if you do it on Monday, they're like, ooh, it's Monday. And if you do it on Friday, they're like, ooh, it's Friday. So if you do it in the middle, they're not really just getting back into the swing of school at the beginning of the week. And they're not just um, tired because it's Friday. So I think for me, Wednesdays work out really good. Um, also, for whatever reason, kids are not absent a lot on Wednesdays. So they're absent on Mondays and Fridays, for me at least. So that kind of helps to, for me to catch them all and make sure they're doing their EOC practice. Just another little catch-all. If we have to do a baseline or a benchmark or any kind of like state or district mandated like practice tests and anything like that, we'll do it on Wednesday. So I can go ahead and carve out that time for it. Wednesdays also are, I would say, the warm-up that takes the longest. Besides Tuesday, where we might be taking a lot of notes, 
Wednesday takes a long time. And it kind of helps me in my planning. I always know my lesson on Wednesday is going to have to be a little shorter because we'll take about half the class time to do this EOC practice. So moving on. Thursday is Throwback Thursday. Now, I probably am going to get some slack for this, but this is just my opinion. I hate teaching grammar. I like grammar. I think it's important. I hate teaching it. Number one, it's because the kids should already know this crap. And for the most part, they do. They just don't actually use it or put it into use. Um, and my thing is we need to review it, but we need to review it in a way that makes sense for them, if this makes sense. So the first, the very first thing that we do I will give them a list of like 10 commonly confused words. And it's like no and no. Like K-N-O-W and then N-O. Two, two, and two. The number two, um, connection two, and then um, two as in like also. There, there, and there. So these are the ones that people mess up a lot. And all it is is I give them the list of 10. I say number your paper one to 10. Use these words correctly in the sentence, underline them, we're going to go over it. That's our very first throwback Thursday. Is this grammar? Yes. Is it something they can actually use? Yes. It's not do this worksheet. It's, okay, how do you think you use it? And for the most part, they do really well on these, and I think it kind of amps their confidence about it because they know it's grammar, but how many times do you need to do a worksheet on the three theirs? I mean, they're going to mess them up anyway. This is just my opinion. So, the two hardest ones on that day are it's and it's. The one with the apostrophe and the one without. That's easy. Another thing we'll do on another Throwback Thursday is we will go over abbreviations. So, when you say the letter K, you actually mean OK. But it's not just OK, it's O-K-A-Y. If you write LBS, that sounds for pounds. If you write ST, that stands for street. Um, if you're talking about an actual street, you need to capitalize it. So that day we have about 20. They're literally just writing 20 words out. And it's just a good reminder. We also will put abbreviations on that list. Can't. Write it out. Cannot. Won't. Will not. Wouldn't. Would not. Okay? And just kind of go over them. I think they're, it's a good review. And then I talk about, hey, when we write essays in here, you really shouldn't be using contractions. Write out the full word. I'm, I am, it's, it is. And it's just, like I said, a good reminder. Another thing we'll do is um, this coming up Thursday, we're going to talk about a semicolon. What is a semicolon? When should I use it? And it's going to be a really quick review. I talk about it's not just for the winky face, which they don't even do anymore because they have like the full emoji. But we talk about how to use a semicolon. The next week we'll talk about ellipsis, so the three dots. Um, and yes, this is grammar. Yes, this is spelling. Yes, this is punctuation. We don't take a whole class period on it. We don't do worksheets on it. And we're actually putting it into practice. It's not just random things. It's like, hey, I need you to make a sentence. And do I let them work with their group? Yes. Because they still have to write it down. So that's kind of my opinion. I don't think I ever actually explained, but it's called Throwback Thursday because there are things they should already know. It should be a review. So that's kind of my opinion on that. And then Friday. So for Friday, I used to do Free Write Friday. And I found that a lot of the kids just didn't actually do it. Um, so I've changed it and now we do Focus Friday and I just pick five riddles. And for instance, one might say what starts with a T, ends with a T, is, is filled with T. answer is teapot. And so they just write it down and they do these with their group. And I think it's kind of fun on a Friday to just do something a little bit more relaxing. Yeah, they have to think about it, but is it that important? Eh kind of brain teasers. Some of them are really bad jokes, like, why'd you throw the butter out the window to see the butterfly? And, you know, they go, ah, you know, and they don't like them, but 
they're funny. And just for Friday, it kind of ends on something fun. I guess I could call it Fun Friday, but then people, our administration wouldn't like that. They'd be like, oh, we need to, this is why are we doing fun things? Not that my administration's bad. I'm just, that was a joke. Maybe I should cut that part in. Anyways, so that's how I do warm-ups. Now, I know some people are going to say, well, how do you grade them? Well, this is going to be controversial as well. But don't tell my students, I don't grade them. Kid doesn't do it, whatever. Because a lot of it is either note-taking or practice and you just need to do it. That's just, that's just kind of my opinion on it. Like, you just do it. Or you're going to be behind and you're not going to do well on your tests and stuff. I'm sorry, my puppy needs some attention. But come up here. Come here. Okay. So, what I do do is they're writing all these in their notebooks. And so what I do do is a notebook check. And of course, while they're doing the warm up, I'm up walking around. I'm making sure that they're doing it. If they're not doing it, I say, you need to get started. All that good stuff. Um, but it's just one of those things where when we do a notebook check, I don't actually grade the notebook. I have them grade it. And that's probably something for a whole nother video. I'll try to explain it fast. But the way I do notebook check is I'll have like 10 questions and the question will say like, What's the answer to number three on page six? B. Like they literally just write down the word B. Next question. What was the date on page seven? What did, what did we write at the top of page eight? Like it's really simple stuff because what I want from them is I want them to just be able to check it themselves. Because you know when we do notebook checks they take forever. If I go through and grade them in this way, I think it makes them a little bit more responsible. They're held a little bit more accountable. Because when they turn to page 7, and page 7 is blank, that kind of hits them hard. Because they call me over. I don't have anything on page 7. And I said, why didn't you do the warm-up on that day? Well, I don't remember. I said, I guess, I guess you just have to guess. All right, then. So... I think it's good for them to realize that. I also have a lot that will say, I can't read what I wrote. I said, well, honey, if you can't read it, I can't read it. And so they have to sit there and really think about how bad their handwriting is. And it's not necessarily they have bad handwriting. It's that they're writing really fast and really sloppy or they're not skipping lines. They're scrunching it together. So it's kind of a reality check for a lot of them. By the time we do the second notebook check, I really don't have any problems anymore. And to be quite honest, I don't really do more than two notebook checks unless I have a really, really tough class that is not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, so it's not supposed to be a gotcha. I mean, they're just supposed to help them. So I don't see the point in taking a really huge grade on it and checking every single thing. But that's just my opinion. Now, here's the second thing. In my English 2 class, we also are doing a second warm-up. So uh, they're extra warm. I, it wasn't as funny as I thought it was going to be. But I have them read a chapter or a vignette from House on Mango Street. Um, and there'll be like two questions up on the screen. They can read it by themselves or with their group, and then they answer the two questions on a piece of paper. And then at the end of the week, we've done five chapters. They staple their papers together, and they turn it in. Now, that one I do great, but that's their second warm-up. And then we start the day. So we actually do two things be excuse me, before we actually start clock. Oh, my God. Excuse me. Our classwork. Stop biting my hand. So... That's that's how I do warm-ups um, or do nails or bell ringers or whatever. Now, that was all for sophomores. If I'm talking about seniors, which we know is on the other end of the spectrum, the seniors at my school, and you heard me talk about this so much, you're probably ready to scream just like they are about this, but our seniors do a graduation project. So all of their warm-ups are things related to writing and it's not just like write this it's like the very first week we do MLA format 
I teach them what MLA format is on Monday, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they do practices on it. Um, and that can be random. It can be whatever we need it to be. And then on Friday, after that warm-up, that last one, uh, the last practice, I mean, then they will do a quiz. So, um, the next week we did how to make an argument because this is when they're picking their topic. So it becomes really important that they have an arguable topic because I don't let them just pick dogs. It has to be, I'm going to argue that not all pit bulls are aggressive or whatever. So we did making an argument. So we talked about personal opinion, fact, reasoned argument. And then I would say, okay, aliens, make it argumentative and all these things. And then Friday, I took a quiz on it. This coming week, we're going to talk about thesis statements. So we'll learn what a thesis statement is, do some examples. On Monday, we'll practice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then on Friday, they actually have to turn in their thesis statement. So for them, their stuff is structured a little different. And we'll go through and it goes with whatever's kind of due that week. So if it's just something they need to learn, then they'll have a quiz with it on Friday. Um, but then if it's something that they need to actually do for their paper, like a thesis statement or an outline or note cards and source cards or a rough draft or an introduction or a conclusion or work cited page, whatever, then they actually turn the thing in on Friday. And my seniors last year said they really liked this because they felt like they were getting a lot of detail about it, but we didn't spend the whole class period on it. And also, they turned in their thing on Friday and then they got the weekend to do whatever they wanted. And this was because I took them home on Friday, graded them over the weekend, had them back to them in their hands by Monday. So it hadn't been that long since they'd done it, and they were fresh in their minds. I don't know about you, but when I was a student, one of the things I hated the most was turning work in, not getting it back in time to be able to look at it and actually remember what I had done. Um, it'd be two months later or something like that. So I try to get it back to them fast so they remember and they're getting really quick feedback. So that's it. That's all my warm-ups. Sophomores, seniors, that's really all I've done. Um, when I taught journalism, we didn't do warm-ups, but it was also the first year I taught it and the last year. When I taught English 3, I only taught it for one semester and I reused my warm-ups from English 2 with some fixing. So I really don't have anything for that one either. Never taught freshmen. Hope I never will. So with all that being said, I hope that this was informative. Someone actually asked me if I would talk about my warm-ups and things. And I, I didn't actually tell this, but I have them all on PowerPoint. And I connect it to my projector and put them up on the screen. So as soon as the kids walk in the room, it's up there and ready to go. So there's no uh, hanging around, waiting on me, all that good stuff. They just go ahead and get started. <sighs> that was a lot. I feel like I haven't breathed. <laughs> I'm going to apologize to you. This week, I attempted, attempted to film some vlogs and things in my classroom. A lot of things happen. Monday, Tuesday, I filmed. I did a little intro, okay? I didn't get diddly squat filmed in the actual room, okay? Actually, one day I did. I filmed. I filmed me all talking to the kids about Beowulf and monsters, and it was a great discussion. I was so excited. And when I was done filming, I clicked the X. So it didn't save it. Instead of clicking stop, I clicked the X. It exited out. I lost it. Cool. That was it. It's gone. The next class, I remember to film. And I have it. But I didn't film an intro for that day. And that was it. That was the last thing I did this week. So I vlogged for two days an intro for one day during one lesson of House on Mango Street. And that's it. And I'm going to be a vlogger. Hmm. So the weekly vlog is kind of a process. I don't know if it's really for me. I don't know if I'm really meant to do a weekly vlog. Because right now it's seeming more that way. I really like doing more videos like this. 
But what I am planning on doing is doing more of me saying, okay, here's how I teach House on Mango Street and having some clips of how I teach it to my kids and our interactions with the book and things like that. I don't know if that's interesting to people or not, but I'm thinking that's more my style than the vlogging. Maybe once I get more comfortable with this, I'll be more into the vlogging, but who knows. So that's it for this week, or not this week, this video. I'm working on some other ones that are going to come out soon, but I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you liked kind of learning about how I do warm-ups and do-nows and bell ringers and all that good stuff. I really like to hear other people's ideas on this. What do you think kind of about my ideas? Is there anything I should fix or change? What are some things that you do? So just kind of let me know in the comments. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Check out some of my other videos. I did post finally my classroom tour and it looks pretty awesome. So check that one out and we'll see you next time. Bye.